Welcome to this edition of Windows IT Pro Insider. We are here at the uh, Windows IT Pro corporate offices up in Fort Collins, Colorado, here for some meetings. So we are all here. With Death Star is the same it. place. <laughs> right, we are deep inside the evil empire, complete with a uh, slide uh, to take us from the second floor to the first floor, one of our favorite features here. But we should make a video of that. <laughs> in fact, we will do that. We'll do that after this. Yeah, yeah. It'll That's be like right. the beginning of the monkeys. <laughs> Are the bouncing chairs still here? We could have filmed in the bouncing hey, chairs. Hey, so yeah, the bouncing chairs. chairs. <laughs> but anyway, so no, uh, we have some fun things to talk about with uh, Windows 8 and uh, some of the new features on Windows 8. Just got some things to talk about security. So uh, why don't you? Yeah, there's a couple things I wanted to talk about uh, related to Windows 8 security. Uh, one is there's been some recent controversy about um, there's the new replacement for. Um, BIOS, you know, your standard BIOS, it's called, and I wrote this down because it was very hard to remember, the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, or UEFI for short. UEFI, oh, that just <laughs> rolls off the tongue. We like for that. UEFI, I guess you can take your uh, pick there. But essentially, the, the latest controversy is that some uh, Linux distribution folks are kind of upset because they think that uh, using some uh, features of UEFI, Windows 8 can basically make it so you can't dual boot with any right. other, you can't only boot with Windows 8, you can't boot with a Linux distribution. So there's been a lot of stuff on the internet about that, and, and it's actually a lot of misinformation. It's not actually accurate. So do you guys have any other thoughts on that? Or I, I think it's no loss to anybody. Anyway, you don't really want to boot Linux anyway, so. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I agree, Mike. <laughs> I, I, I love the supposed story that this is, you know, mm -hmm. that Microsoft engineered this so that we couldn't dual boot with Linux. When in fact, Microsoft yeah. has nothing to do with this. They're just adhering to that UEFI standard, and if PC makers are the ones that are going to implement this or not. So, sure. uh, I don't, it's, uh, it's optional, <laughs> obviously, I, I, this is a non-starter, no one is really installing yeah. Linux on desktops in volume anyway, so this is sort of a trumped up, invented story, or my favorite kind of story, <laughs> <laughs> really. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's, that also sounds like one of those, uh, not the UEFI or whatever you want to call it, it's, yeah. it's, going, to be, it's going to be one of those, uh, secret club passwords, if you know the right way to say it, or the wrong way to say it, as to whether or not you're in the cool kids club. So like I'm obviously Azure, out. Or Windows Azure. Azure. Oh, yeah. Like, like everything, this came out because this is an early release of Windows 8, yeah. so when you put the early builds on, if it disrupts the boot process, you shouldn't really be surprised about that. Sure. And, you know, and as things come along and as it becomes finalized, there'll be ways to dual boot if you really want to. Of course. It's, sure. it's not know, in Microsoft's interest to yeah. not do that. Windows 8 isn't done until Linux don't run. <laughs> you know, that's oh, the, I like that. The new I can see bumper stickers yeah, yeah, yeah. that slogan. So, and on, the, on another topic on the security front, uh, one of the coolest new features of Windows 8 uh, on the security scene is the new picture password mm -hmm. feature, where essentially you can use uh, some gestures on your Windows 8 start screen to log in, which is a great way uh, to improve security. But also, Microsoft applied for a patent for that. I think this week. Yeah. And Paul has actually got one of the the, yeah. the only Windows 8 tablets, one of the few Windows 8 tablets that was handed out to build. So right, so there are actually a few different ways you can log into Windows 8 now. So you have the traditional login, obviously, and all the smart cards and all that stuff. They also have a PIN login, which is like you log in on the phone, standard, mm -hmm. similar. And then they have this picture password. So I've configured this with a picture of my wife, you can see it. And the way it basically works is you get two points in a line. And so in this case, I've used her eyes and her mouth for those. So. I'm doing this sideways, we'll see if I can do it. And I did, and then you log in, and that's it. Very cool. This is handy for a touch screen, mm -hmm. obviously. Sure. Now is that, so you choose, you can choose any photo that you want yeah. to do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, behind the scenes, you obviously have a real password, but you can uh, override that with either the pin, or in, the, or in this case, a, a picture password. This is exactly one of the things that needed. We discussed this a little bit last time, but the touch screen, as you encounter it initially, it's kind of strange, but then it becomes uh, second nature very, very quickly about yeah, how you use these uh, things. There were two things that uh, Microsoft told me, yeah, one of which has absolutely come true around Windows 8. The first, the one that's come true is the touch stuff, where if you spend any amount of time touching the screen, you get home and you turn on a laptop and you find yourself uh, hitting it, and oh, right, it doesn't work. You know, and it, it is weird. Um, there a lot of people were saying, well, every, not everyone's going to have a touch screen and everything, except that, you know, maybe everyone is going to have a touch screen, and certainly if they ever use one, they're going to want one, I, I think, they just haven't done it. Right. Well, something I would like to point out that is not obvious to the viewer is that Paul is demoing this <laughs> right. on top of uh, the, the prone yeah. body of an iPad. Die, iPad. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> right. So, that was definitely a highlight. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's my iPad, right. too, so oh, please sorry, don't share that. Yeah. The device, though, it's, it's pretty cool. The, the touch interface is definitely the way things are going. And I do believe that, like you said, this could be a real driver for these kind of this touch-enabled hardware. Well, there's been a lot of, if you're part of the expression, noise of going on about the fan on this thing. Yeah. But it's an early unit, right? Yeah, this is a prototype, essentially. Right. I mean, this hardware will be shipping next month, but it won't have a lot of the sensors that are in here for the Windows 8 developer stuff. So it's unclear if this will, uh, if the fan will be the same on that shipping unit. But right. I would just remind people that this is not a Windows 8 tablet, that when those ship next year, they're going to be ARM versions, and right. uh, we'll be two generations in on the Intel chipset, too. So I think we're going to have fanless, or at least far more quiet uh, tablets as well. Uh, that's certainly going to be a high requirement, because it really is remarkable the amount of processing horsepower you can get out of this, and mm -hmm. it doesn't need, not only does it not have a fan, it doesn't even heat up. Right. So that's, um, that's quite a high... Bar to, to there are going to be some issues though when the ARM version ships though, isn't there? Because that's where the program compatibility thing is actually yeah. going to stop. Yeah. Because with this device right now, there's complete program compatibility, so everything that runs on Windows 7 runs on this. Yeah. But with the ARM processor, that's not necessarily going to be the case. Right. It's a break. Yeah, and actually that was the second of the two things I said Microsoft mentioned to me that where you really can't test the second of the two, which is simply that Today, a lot of the apps you run on this Windows 8 tablet are the apps you already have, the traditional desktop apps. Mm -hmm. So you're switching back and forth between this environment and the old. It's old, new, old, new, old, new, like that. And it's, it's a little bit of a jarring experience, but the, the thing people need to understand is that before Windows 8 ships, the Windows Store is going to open, developers will be already uh, uh, providing users with new apps, and there will be a ton of apps that will run in this environment, and that over time, you won't be going back and forth all that much, unless you're a real power user and have it a couple of old-fashioned type apps, or I shouldn't say old-fashioned, tr traditional desktop apps, um, and that most people will be able to exist in this environment. And for those people using the ARM-based tablets, th that will be fine. It will work like an iPad. Everything will just be that one environment. Right. You know, you can imagine, you know, a big flat screen monitor in the server room, you know, maybe a year or two from now where an admin can go in and really do maybe some of the top-level tasks Absolutely. just with touch. And actually, if you've you installed know. Windows Server 8, this start screen exists there, and mm -hmm. There are tiles on there for those interfaces, like server manager and so forth. Right. Yeah, very much so. And the computing world is in in the next couple of years is going to look a lot different on sure. five different fronts. It's going to feel know. a lot different too. <laughs> I'm, still waiting, I'm still waiting for the air gestures. You know? Yeah. Well, that's coming. Uh, that's coming too, right? Connect. Yeah, yeah connect. You yeah. already have it. Yeah. They have demoed it. I saw Edwin demo that at. Uh, was oh it yeah. Tech, yeah. Tech Ed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zooming in and out of planets and things uh, like that. Sure. Yeah. So. I can see some interesting gestures used to delete files. <laughs> I have a gesture for the blue screen if you're curious. Uh, <laughs> quick, quick reboot of the you know computer. Yeah. Sure. So you're showing that this is the start screen right here. Now yeah. not everybody has seen this. Maybe That's you want to show some of the basics of how this thing works. And they certainly haven't seen it. Maybe yeah. In why? portrait, for example, yeah. you know one of the interesting things about this is uh, virtually everything works in portrait as well as landscape. But mm -hmm. Microsoft does feel that most people are going to use it in landscape because that's how our monitors are today but you know for a tablet sometimes you'll be holding it like this and for a reading app or uh, you know a lot of those news aggregation apps news readers and so forth that actually makes some sense so I will of course be sure to tap on something that doesn't work in portrait but let's see if this works <laughs> um, yeah because I think this one I think this one might in fact be yeah this one is just this is a sample app it's a, an RSS reader it's landscape only as you can see um, and I don't know how well we can see it from here but you know, it's just a good example of the nice presentations and, and whatnot that you get. So beyond touchscreen, you know, then the device itself has sensors in it, so it can tell when you rotate yeah. it and other things like that. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, just like the iPad. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Right. So it has location sensors, accelerometer, tilt sensors, and all that kind of stuff. It's mm -hmm. got, you know, the performance is fantastic. I mean, I think that's one of those things that's really kind of amazing. And as I've been using it, I put, of course, because that's all I have, I put a lot of desktop apps in there. And so there's a full you know, normal desktop environment, and they do something pretty nice where when you install anything, those things actually all appear at the end of that start screen. So you can see these are all those traditional uh, desktop applications. So if you were to tap one, you know, it comes up in the desktop mm -hmm. normally as you would. So you can still go back to that start menu even to access the traditional apps. Yeah. The other the other thing that's interesting, you know, I. I miss the start menu in the traditional desktop, except for one thing. The, the thing that I really miss the most is start menu search, because I use it all the time. But actually what I found out was, that works exactly the same way from here. And it's a little tough because I don't have the keyboard here. In fact, it's almost impossible because I don't have the keyboard here. Let me see if I can 
there's a way that I can't really do it from here. So the way that this would work with a keyboard is if you just start typing, it actually brings up a search screen. So I'll just go to it manually. Um, and then this will bring up a keyboard. So I can type in something like uh, P H O T O for photo. And then you get this list of search results, which is exactly the way Star Menu Search works, right? So it's actually built into the Start screen as well. And again, if you had a keyboard, you could just start typing it. You wouldn't have to go through that extra step. But again, it's the same way. I tend to find apps in my own system that way now, and it just works right. exactly the same way. So I go to Photo Gallery, which was that app that was already running, or whatever. You know, and it's you know if you don't have a keyboard, you, you, it's just a, a little swipe, bring up the search right. menu, same thing. That makes sense because I I know in Windows Seven arranging I like to arrange my start menu yes. by genre like these are video apps these are audio apps and all that and it's mm -hmm. a pain to to build a menu the way you like it in that so I inevitably I'd end up using search more often because it's just easier to pay yeah I you know. right once start right. menu search came along I actually stopped doing that because I used to do right. the same thing yeah so me too so you don't have to worry about it as much anymore although it's interesting you can't do it in the developer preview build but they're going to allow you to group the start menu the start screen here. In that fashion, so there are actually groups here already. So they're separated mm -hmm. by these dividers. You'll be able to name these and, mm -hmm. and order them the way you want. Obviously, drag things in the way you want. You can do things like that now. Um, this is a little hard sideways, but um, you know you can move things around this way. And you can also do and, and again, I'm, this, I'm doing this backwards, so it's a little hard. But each of these things has an app bar menu you can bring up, and what you see there will depend on what the thing is that you. Right. So the context sensitive bar. Yeah. So the metro style apps should but don't in this case so I will not <laughs> see if I can find one. Uh, usually they'll have an option where you can make it a bigger or a smaller tile like that kind of thing and and there are APIs uh, built into Windows 8 that allow the developer to determine what gets surfaced on that tile depending on whether it's big or small right because it can right. be more visual or provide right. more information. Provide live bigger. updates and what yeah. updates. Yeah exactly right. Okay. It is pretty cool how the whole metro style is kind of seeping out throughout the community. I mean, you used to, I wrote an article on yeah. not too long ago about Steam, do the online game service potentially at least doing a, a mock up of what their service would look like. You well, know, you that see that thing, and it's like, oh my God, that is so beautiful. That's yeah, cool. And I think that's the neat thing. You know, unfor unfortunately, and I understand why they did it, but when you see these really basic sample apps, they look simple and kind of Fisher pricey, and it's like, well, Okay, so the professional apps will be on the desktop and the fun little apps will be on the start screen. It's like, well, hold on a second. <laughs> Actually, the you know the APIs that are behind this are very full featured and virtually anything you can do on the desktop you can do here. It would be possible for Office or WordPerf, I'm sorry, WordPerf, sure. like as if WordPerf was <laughs> Office or uh, <laughs> Photoshop. Blast from the yeah. past. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> a little, uh, <laughs> little memory access issue there. Um, it would be possible to develop any of those high, you know, high-end apps in this environment mm -hmm. as well. I, I think that's going to be the most surprising bit that comes over the next few months because developers are going to go nuts on this stuff. And yeah, we're going to have goofy little Angry Bird games and things, mm -hmm. but we're also going to have, I think, professional apps. Right. And I think that's going to be a big, big deal when it happens. Yeah, sure. I agree. I remember, the, was it at Build where they showed all the, the college interns they brought in to build all yeah. these sample apps? No, what a sweet gig was that? I mean, yeah, come yeah. on, <laughs> wouldn't you like to be one of those guys that come in and build those apps? That, yeah. That's nice. And that, you know, it, it's neat. I think the point there was, look how easy it is. Mm -hmm. People fresh out of college can do this. Okay, fair enough. But on the other hand, it also creates this thing where it's like, well, these are really kind of basic, simple apps. Mm -hmm. um, so is it possible? I mean, some of them are beautiful. You know, the weather app is particularly nice looking. Now, don't they have attributes where they have something you can pull a taskbar up from the bottom, and they have something called charms on the right hand side? Yeah. So with yeah, so within an app, they have what they call the edge UIs. Uh, most apps are going to have something on the bottom. That'll be that app bar that mm -hmm. you were talking about. It has it can have icons, buttons on it. Um, some of them will also have something on the top. Uh, Internet Explorer is an example of that, and you can bring up the app bar by swiping down from the top or swiping up from the bottom. And this one has that app bar that you were mm -hmm. talking about. And if I go into IE, the web browser. This is a good. This is the one example I can think of that has both. So you have an app bar at the bottom that has the address bar and some other browser type buttons, and then the tabs are all at the top. Mm -hmm. So that's that's that. And then uh, from the start screen or from any application, you also get those charms. And uh, from with the touch control, you can do it. It's a swipe from the side that brings up this list of the five charms: uh, search, share, start, devices, and settings. And it also has this neat overlay that has the time of the date and the day. And then some of the little notifications around wireless and power and so forth. Right. Um, and you just have to get rid of that. So obviously, start brings us back to the start screen. Um, 
search was that search going to be looked at previously? Share will depend on what you're doing. So right now we're just in this app list, so share probably isn't going to have too much. It says can't share this, <laughs> so it's going to have nothing. But that would be application centric. So if you were on a web page and you said share, mm -hmm. you'd be able to email that web page to other people or do things like that. Something that would make sense for the application. And then devices, you know, I don't really have anything connected to here, but the one uh, device that always pops up is this. Uh, actually, there are two, I'm sorry. There's a Play 2, which is that media uh, capability. Oh, okay. And then there's a Project menu, which is the old Windows key plus P. Oh, sure. Where you oh, can yeah. bring up the different screens. Yeah. And in fact, if you tap that, you'll see those exact okay. choices right there. You get Windows 7 just in a slightly different display. Cool. A much appreciated feature. Yeah. And then Settings is Settings for the current item, which in this case is the star screen. And also those notifications down here, the little notifications icon. You have the ability to uh, you know, res uh, reset the computer or shut down or go to sleep if you want to do that manually. Choose a language if it's available. Change the brightness of the screen, the volume. Oops, I tap something else. Oh, that was the network screen. I you know, choose a network and so forth. Right. This has built in 3G as well as Wi Fi networking, so you can enable that on the fly if you want from there. So, I mean, that's, the, that's the basics of it. There's also some options around the user that goes off of a user button up there and then just those general settings. Right through the control panel. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Lots to look at. I know you've been playing with this nonstop for the last couple of weeks. I so <laughs> <laughs> I've worn my fingerprints yeah, yeah, yeah. off. Where are they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually whittled my fingers down to fine points. <laughs> so I can point more precisely. Right. Yes, the stylus fingers. Exactly. Anything else guys? Okay. No, I covered it. Well good. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time.